Hey, it's Thursday. I am on the road after running some errands today, uh, picking up a few things. I had to stop and, okay. I went to Walmart. I had to get, what did I have to get? Orange juice, I guess that's what I needed to get. And I get in there and of course you don't walk out with just orange juice. You know, I'm tempted of course by the, uh, the holiday sales, you know, the little box sets with the Jack Daniels in the glass with it, you know, anyway. A lot of those sitting out and I'm looking at them just salivating and I didn't buy any, don't need any. So I did, stayed away from that aisle as well. I went through it. I did get, well, I did get a little bit. But it wasn't for me, it was fireball shots. You know, the bucket of fireball shots, I don't drink it. But when I have people over, you know, they got a little shot they can do. People like fireball for some reason. They like the rumple mints. I remember when I was younger, I used to get some rumple mints every time I would take a shot of that stuff. That was it. I was gonna lose it, and I usually did. It's just, I don't know what the reaction is, that cinnamony flavor, same with Fireball. I get this. People love it, not me. So anyway, that's what I got, little mini bottles. And I'll tell you, that might be a good investment with inflation, because the bottle is like uh, 90 cents a piece. You buy the 20 pack, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, everything's going up. Cream cheese shortages now. You're not gonna get a schmear in New York. I mean, every t you know, every day there's something else. It was maple syrup last week, it's cream cheese this week. I mean, what's it gonna be? I mean, I'm waiting for the tobacco shortages, you know, stock up if you need to have that stuff. But think barter items. You know, all this comes down to all these things that are running out that we need or we want and we use every day. I mean, you think about this, you go to New York, you want a bagel, and you can't get any cream cheese. I mean, that's a big deal. That's a comfort thing for people. If you don't have it, what are you gonna, it's like running out of coffee. You know, and I don't drink coffee anymore. I don't have any, I don't drink any caffeine because I went on a cleanse with Bix and Amy Weir back in, back when the Litecoin Summit was in Vegas. You know, we did that Red Cat Life did it too. And Polly P I think did it too. So we all did a cleanse and it was a nine day cleanse. And I mean, I need to do that again because I'm, I need to. But, you know, you would drink juices and then um, for three days and then you would drink, um, I think, smoothies and I don't know what it was, you know, soups, whatever. <coughs> excuse me. <You> got, <coughs> excuse me, got to the point where, you know, you just didn't want to eat anymore. Your stomach was like, eh, you know, I just didn't want it. You reset your body to where it just doesn't want that food. So in the process of doing that, you know, of course, you had to give up drinking, caffeine, none of that stuff. It had to be raw food. And so, you know, I quit the caffeine after three days. It was a nightmare. Two and three, day two and three, it was just horrible. You know, the headaches, if you've ever gotten off caffeine, it's one of the worst, just, oh, pain in your head. It's not good. So I went through that and I said, you know what, I'm done. I'm not drinking any more caffeine. I'm not going through this crap again. So I haven't had caffeine for two years, over two years. And, um, you know, I'm fine with that. I need to give up some of my other bad habits. <clears throat> But the point is, you know, you're gonna need these things, and what if they're gone? You're gonna go through caffeine withdrawals if you can't get your coffee. Same cream cheese, you can't get your bagel with the schmear. You're, you know, you're gonna have a problem getting through the day. And it's, you know, that's where we're at though. I mean, the supply chains are so screwed up, the monetary system, the economic system is so fractured and so damaged from what we've gone through with this pandemic that I don't know how you recover. And you know, everybody's hiring. The little town, you know, that I, 3,600 people, I live near, that's my the biggest town I live near. 3,600 people, there's a McDonald's. Now hiring, $13 an hour. All right, minimum wage, I don't even know what it is at this point, because there's a federal minimum wage and then there's a state minimum wage. But $13 an hour is over the minimum wage. Just saying. And they still can't get people. And I started thinking, okay, is people just maybe disappearing off the planet for, for some reason? Hmm, I don't know. But it is odd that everybody's hiring and nobody's working. I saw the Economic Ninja the other day, they tweeted something and, and said that that is the new, the new normal. Somebody tweeted it and I think he commented on it. That, you know, middle of the week, middle of the day, everybody's out shopping, like me, and when I work from home and my phone, you know, goes with me and I'm always working but everybody's out shopping 
but they can't staff anything. So nobody's working. And I'm just thinking, all right, where's all the money coming from? Well, you flooded the system with a bunch of money already. I mean, is it getting to the people or are people just going into debt? Is it, you know, what is it, I guess? Because the stimulus has run out, as far as I know. I don't think you're getting anything else. You know, the child, half the child tax credit, you know, in the next, I think it ends this month. And then um, that's it. There's nothing else left. They left the extra unemployment benefits have run out. So I'm thinking, where is the money coming from? Maybe everybody's rich off crypto. I did see that several, there was a certain percentage of people who've retired because they did well in cryptocurrencies. I mean, good for them. And to get to crypto, you know, this fractured economic system, you know, you're looking to the Fed to make decisions. Oh, we're gonna raise rates, we're gonna lower rates, we're gonna ease, we're gonna quantitative easing, you know, we're gonna make money more available. I mean, you're looking to all these so-called leaders and entities to fix things and waiting on the sidelines for something to happen. That's not the way to live your life. You just gotta say, what do I want out of life? And that, that, I, honestly, that's probably the hardest thing. That's why people are in the situation they're in now. Most of us don't know what we want. You need to sit down and reflect and have a conversation with yourself and realize, hey, what do I really want out of life? What brings me peace? What brings me happiness? And once you identify that, then you've got a goal instead of, well, we'll see what happens. Hopefully I can retire someday. It's like, man, you're gonna get to the point, I've seen so many people it happen to, you know, they get retired, money that they have coming in is not enough. You know, they can't live the lavish retirement lifestyle they wanted. And then their health is no good. You know, they can't do the things they used to do. They don't wanna travel. They don't wanna do all these things, you know, that they wanted to do when they were younger. So do it when you're younger. Just identify that that's what you want to do, and then make it happen. Just, just, just put a plan together and realize what's important and what isn't. And I was looking last night, you know, as far as television, you know, what you can watch. You know, you get it through cable, you know, or the media companies, or, or do you get it through Hulu or Netflix? And all the options that you have. And I mean, that's a big chunk of a lot of people's life cell phones i mean you know how much is that you're paying for your cell phones as a family is there a way to cut that out and maybe be freer and do the things that you really want to do yeah we kind of all need a cell phone at this point because all of our data all the things we do it's tied to that but uh, do you need the cell service or do you just need a phone that uh, doesn't have a sim card and connects to wi-fi you know there's a danger there but you know a lot of people do it and you know, you can have voice over IP, Alex Mashinsky. And you can call people and receive calls without a cell service. So, I mean, you know, there are options. I guess my point is, with everything crumbling around us, with nothing seeming to work like it's supposed to work, as we've become accustomed to in the past, you know, hey, it's always gonna be there. It ain't always gonna be there. Well, I was in Walmart, I walked by the TVs. I can't believe how much they've gone up in price. That was the one thing that always bucked inflation. You know, it went the opposite direction because I think we exported our inflation to China. And you know, they're making everything overseas in Asia, China and a lot of places. But it got to the point where, I mean, every year the TVs would be cheaper. All the technology got better, the TVs got bigger and the price got smaller. Not so much anymore. I think this is the first year that I've seen, the first holiday season that I've seen to where the price of the TVs have gone up and significantly up. Last year, I bought a 55 inch TCL with the Roku built in on a Black Friday deal for 148 bucks, 55 inch. So today I see a 65 inch, same thing, TCL with the Roku built in, 10 inches bigger, it was 4.98. I mean, yeah, granted that wasn't like a deep Black Friday deal, but I mean, they're up like 50%. I mean, just just by eyeballing the prices and watching stuff, I think easily up 50%. And there aren't any good deals on them. So, you know, all those things that we're used to having on the cheap, we're not going to get them anymore. It looks like it looks like we got a real problem. So we got to start really evaluating what do we want out of life? That's the goal here.
what brings us freedom, peace, happiness. You know, we can get in the hamster wheel and run, run, run all day long. Meanwhile, we're getting all that energy sucked away by inflation because they're creating more money and it's driving the price of everything up and you're not making enough to keep up. That's the problem. You're just getting robbed every freaking paycheck. Got to understand that and then realize, all right, what can I do about it? What can you do about it? Well, you write down on a piece of paper what your goals are. What brings me happiness? First step, second step, third step, and start checking off the boxes as you reach that. But in the process of doing that, you got to realize you're losing your money. You're losing your energy. That paycheck, it's not helping. It's getting worse. So what can you do? That's where cryptocurrency comes in. If you get involved and allocate some money to cryptocurrencies, you look at what Bitcoin and Litecoin were last year at this time. Litecoin, I'm gonna say it was like 75 bucks. Bitcoin, maybe 20,000 at this point. I'm thinking last Christmas it was around 20, 25,000. It's double that now. Same with Litecoin, it's double that now. So if you back then, you had allocated a little bit of money, you would have doubled that money. And you would have maintained a purchase, some purchasing power, which you won't do if you hold dollar bills. It cannot happen because that's not the way the system is designed. It's designed to rob you of your wealth because it's inflationary. It's just a debt-based system. So every time new money comes in, there's debt attached. So new money has to be created after the fact to pay off that debt. Well, and then that money that's paying off that debt has debt and so you gotta pay that off. So it's just this vicious cycle. It's this, it's really a Ponzi scheme. And you realize that and then you say, okay, well maybe I can do something about it. You know, this is what I talk about in the class. You know, when Litecoin Lisa and I were going, when we go on the road for the happy hour road show, and then this month it's in um, St. Petersburg at the hangar, Albert Whitted Field, an airport down there. And, you know, all the details are on my website, clintwestwood.net. But on Friday night, we do a happy hour. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a meetup. We you know we just hang out. We have some drinks. We talk about anything. We do a live show and bring people on, you know, who are, who are there, you know, that show up. And Jenny Moonstone's going to be there. Pretty cool. She's awesome. Met her in Phoenix in May. Um, she's really cool. So, I mean, if anything, come out and see her. And like Queen Lisa, you know, I'll be there, though, too. And you know, I'll take the overflow. But, I mean, that's why we do this stuff, to, to meet people who are in cryptocurrency and thinking about cryptocurrency and thinking, well, is this the right way? What do I do? That's what we're there for, to help. It's a free event. You just show up. There's no admission charge. And, yeah, you got to pay for your food and drinks, but, you know, you can buy me a drink if you want. But it's, and I'll, I'll drink with you, but it's uh, something that we love doing. And the next day on Saturday, that's Friday night, the happy hour, we're all going to be hanging out at the lounge and doing the live stream. But on Saturday, we do a class. And that's what I talk about in the class. It's about how you're being robbed, how you're getting ripped off, and how cryptocurrency can help alleviate that. You know, you've got the money in your hand. It can't be taken from you. And it's going to go up in value long term like it always has because there's a fixed supply in opposition to the, the Federal Reserve note that they print up that everybody likes to call the dollar, which really isn't a dollar and has no silver in it. So it's important for me to get that message out, to talk to people and hopefully help people see that we don't have sound money. It is not a preservation of our energy. It's not a preservation of our wealth. It's a destruction. It's, it's taking our wealth from us. And it's designed to do that. And once you realize that, then you can say, okay, I see how the game works. Now, what can I do to fix it? But if you don't acknowledge it, you know, and you don't understand it, you're going to live a life of quiet desperation. And you're just going to go on and on in that hamster wheel thinking that, okay, it'll get better sometime. It won't get better. It will continue to get worse because they have to print more and more money now. It's going to get worse and worse for us. So we've got to combat that with something. And, and Bitcoin and Litecoin, those are the answers. Other cryptocurrency, those are the answers. I mean, you can make yield on cryptocurrency. You used to be able to put money in the bank and get 10% interest back in the 80s. Now we're in an inflationary environment and you get less than 1%, a fraction of 1%. I mean, you can stake things in the crypto world and get, I mean, 75% just by staking it and reinvesting it. I mean, I was looking at cake. 
the cake wallet, you know, or so the cake exchange, pancake swap, the cake token, you can stake that and it's like 75% if you just do the auto reinvest. And I, you know, and it tells you all the formulas. I looked at it and I'm like, holy cow, if I put like, if you were able to put, you know, if you had money set aside for retirement, $10,000 you put in there, after it compounds, if that rate stays the same after five years, it was like a few hundred thousand. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I mean, because after the first year, you get like $7,500. And then that gets reinvested, you know, year after year. You know, maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe it was 50000 I can't remember. But it was something ridiculous. You put in $10,000 and look what you get back. So if you're thinking retirement... You know what? Take control of your retirement and get into crypto. There's all kinds of options. You can stake coins very conservatively, you know, and stake Zill right now for 13% and you have possession of it. And it's just, there are better ways out there in the crypto world and you're not getting robbed by the old system. And, you know, just holding coins like Bitcoin and Litecoin, you don't have to stake them. You just have a piece of that pie because there's only so many to go around. There's going to be more and more demand and there has been since they've, you know, been uh, they've come into existence. And so they become more scarce and there's more value attached. It's going to take more dollars to get those things. Just like everything else. It's going to take more dollars to get that cream cheese because there isn't any. You got, a, you got a tub of cream cheese. It's like, well, you know, it used to be five bucks. Well, you know what? I need 50 out of it. You want your schmear in the morning or not? You know, it's the same thing, you know, uh, coffee runs out and you got a couple cans of coffee set aside. It's like, hey, you know, uh, you know, I need this now. It's supply and demand. Cryptocurrency is the same way. So got to start thinking about how to protect ourselves, how to how to buck that system, because the system's going to rob us and it is robbing us. And so once we realize that, then we can say, all right, what's what do I need to do to help protect against that? And what are my goals that I'm trying to accomplish? Is it just to get rich? Getting rich to get rich doesn't mean anything. It's like, what are you going to do with it? Money's just a tool. To me, it's a tool of freedom. And you got to identify what your freedom is, make that checklist, and, and start checking boxes. Make yourself free. Be sovereign. Take control of yourself and your money. Very important. I mean, now, I mean, what an opportunity we have at this time in history transitioning out of one system into another. This is where lives are changed and lives are destroyed. Very important. Realize that. Don't be the ones that get your lives destroyed. Don't be that person and say, I wish I would have done that. Doesn't take much, a small investment. And you know, just, you gotta look into it and do some research and you gotta believe in it. I knew about Bitcoin in 2013 and, and just didn't, eh, didn't buy into it. Had a little bit, got rid of it, you know, just didn't, didn't believe in it until 2017. Then I got it. Wish I would have gotten it in 2013. And so it's like, it's never too late because more and more people are going to get it and they're going to wake up and you're way ahead of them. It's a pot, it's a big pie and you got a piece of it. There's only so much to go around and it can give you freedom, it can change your life. It can do it can do the things that, you know, the pursuit of happiness that we all thought we had here in America. It allows that to happen again. All right. So give that some thought on a Thursday. I tell you what, if you're anywhere near Florida the next weekend, the 17th and the 18th of December, I hope you can make it. I really do. Um, check my website, clintwestwood.net for all the details. Um, get there. Just get there. I'd love to meet you. I really would go out on the road just so I can meet everybody, meet, meet people. I know my buddy from Texas, Jim Montgomery is going to be there. Several people, like I said, Jenny Moonstone, Mitch, Cust Carpentry, he's going to be there. Blind Dave's going to be there. Polly P is going to be there. I mean, there's just great people are going to be there. And, um, boy, I hope you can make it. Hope you can make it. All right. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. Think about what your goals are. What are your freedom? items that you put on that list, start checking them off and look into cryptocurrency. Just look into it. You're never too late because more and more people need to come into it and will come into it. You're way ahead of them. All right. Hope you have a wonderful day. Love y'all.